Hey, this is Carla from the Butcher Babies. This is George Corp from the Fisher from Canada Corp. Hey, this is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. It's Wednesday 13. This is Gas from Devil Dobby. This is from War. You're listening to Rabbit Noise. On Rabbit Radio. Turn it up. Welcome back to Rabbit Noise on Rabbit Radio. That was Frankenstein, uh, the virus remix from the brand new album Rewired from Dark Cell, which is out at the end of the month. And joining us on the program tonight is my good buddy, Jesse Drackman. What's going on, man? Hey, Nav. I'm awesome. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Man, digging this uh, remix. It's sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's uh, been a lot of fun to do. So how did the idea uh, come about? Because I know a little while ago, ago we were talking about it and, you know, you were working on it. But uh, I didn't get yeah. to ask you, what, what, how how did the uh, initial uh, conversation within the band come uh, to get this cooking? We've always been fans of remixes. You know, like I've, I especially have been a huge fan of remixes and remix albums since they died. You know, um, for me, some of my favorite remix albums include the... Um, Di Crooks versus Frontline Assembly, um, Remix Wars album, uh, you know, any of the Nine Inch Nails remix material that he's put out, and the list goes on, you know. Um, even the Zombie remix albums are fun. So, you know, for me, it's, it's great to sort of hear these interpretations. And for us, it was from the get-go, you know, we always wanted to do it. And we, we touched base on it <clears throat> uh, on the first album, when we got, uh, you know, Zima from Combi Christ to do a remix of Lost My Mind in America with his, um, Paul Atkins, um, project, which was, you know, a really cool taste for us of what we could do. So, you know, last year we kind of just went, well, let's just go hellbent to lever and, and make this happen, um, before we bury ourselves in the new album. So, you know, we, we'd spoken to a few of, uh, few of our heroes in the genre and uh you know just to get the interest level we got from them and the enthusiasm that they wanted to work on our material was just mind-blowing so yeah that's pretty much the gist of how it all came about and um it came together quite quickly so it was cool must be uh exciting for you as a musician to hear other especially other musicians who you respect you know their interpretations of your music I mean, some of the names on here, man. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, we didn't just go out there and go, oh, let's just get a bunch of names out there just to sell a CD or nothing. We, you know, these these are guys we grew up with, you know, guys that we've idolized that made us want to create the music that we've created. So to us in certain ways, this is our way of saying thank you to them. Mm. Um, and, you know, just the way that they've approached the material and just put their stamp on it, it's like, it's like nothing else, you know? And, uh, you know, guys like Cyclone Nine and, and Tim Skull, just to, just to hear the, the distinct, uh, signatures throughout the music is just like, just, I don't know. It's really hard to find the words to describe how it feels to listen to that material. So, Whilst people out there may frown upon it and say, ah, oh, just remixes, it's like, well, no, it's not just remixes. This is like uh, an artistic interpretation from our heroes, you know. For me, one of my favourite moments um, in the past listening was hearing a guy like Joey Jordison do a remix of the fight song from Marilyn Manson. Um, that was just one of the coolest things I'd ever heard at the time. So to be able to hear some of my heroes create interpretations of our music was, you know, next level for me. So I've always liked remix albums myself. Like, you know, you mentioned like the the White Zombie ones yep. and, and stuff like that. It's, you know, I, I've never been a fan when, when bands have slapped so-called remixes on on singles and all it is is they've mm. just they've just turned the <laughs> the bass down a little or something like that. Yeah. You know, it- it's a, it's an interesting thing, you know. Uh, the the interpretations on a remix is, you know, I guess you know if you hear one too many of those ones where they've just taken out the drums and replaced it with you know drum loop samples and added some synth and wham bam there's a remix. You know, it's like well, uh, I can understand why people may have a sour taste in their mouth 
um, or have a degree of hesitation to want to hear a remix album. But, you know, when you hear some of the good ones out there, there's, you know, some really cool ones where the artist just totally dissects the formula and creates something else, you know. I mean, the whole process is interesting, you know, like it's, it's a lot of work where, you know, my partner in crime, Matt, had to separate all the stem tracks and mm. uh, all the different layers of the song, send that to said artist who then basically went through with a fine tooth comb and just used elements of each stem that they wanted to use and then add their own little bits and pieces, um, you know, and there was some really interesting interpretations, you know, like, um, you know, hearing the Cycle on Nine remix for The Ununited with, you know, those distinct Cycle on Nine sounds running throughout the track, you know, um, or, you know, a guy like Virus who basically took the song Freakenstein and just rewrote it literally, you know, with added guitars, he even did backing vocals and just did all these crazy things to it, just went above and beyond to make it a, a real listening experience. So, yeah. This is what I'd call a real yeah. remix album. Yeah. You know, it's it's legit. Yeah, I mean, I would stand behind it and say that exactly. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's why, you know, when we talk about it, we're proud as fuck of it because it is it is exactly that. It is a genuine bona fide remix album. Um, you know, look, there, there's going to be... There's going to be moments where it's not for everyone, and that's cool, you know. But there, there are so many tracks there that just uh, they're just a different interpretation of what we're doing, and it's it's really cool to sort of hear uh, some of the things going on throughout the CD. So, you know, I really hope people get a kick out of it um, as much as we certainly did, and uh, you know, hopefully it gets picked up by a few clubs out there to crank out on the dance floor. Oh, definitely, man. I think it is. I think it's going to uh, go really well. Uh, let's let's go to another track now. Which one would you want to hear? What, what can we spin for you? Um, oh, man, by all means. You know, I know you're a Skold fan, so I'd love to hear Tim Skold's uh, version of Exorcist. Let's go to that now, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll be back uh, very soon with Jesse on Rabbit Noise. Hey guys, just want to take a minute to give a shout out to our podcast supporters, RW Promotion, who are the best in the business when it comes to printing posters, flyers, banners, badges, business cards, you name it. They've got what it takes to help you get everything you need to help spread the word about your band or business. And uh, with a blistering turnaround, they'll make sure you get your product ASAP. So get in touch with Richard and the team at www.rwpromotion.com.au or shoot them an email at info at rwpromotion.com.au. Also want to give a shout out to the guys at Blacklight Art and Design, who in my opinion are the Gold Coast best screen printers. So, uh, you know, we've gotten many band shirts and even our own Rabid Noise shirts done through these guys. And uh, they've also got one of the fastest turnarounds I've ever seen. So all quality prints at competitive prices. Uh, So whether it's band merchandise, sporting teams, promotional garments or workwear, you know, they've got you covered. So hit them up at www.blacklightad.com.au or email them at info at blacklightad.com.au. So big thanks to those guys for helping us to bring you this podcast each and every week and for, of course, supporting the metal scene. So now it's back to Rabid Noise. And we're back with Jesse from Dark Cell. Now, uh, you know, we've been talking about this uh, epic Rewired remix album, uh, and there's been talk within the camp about recording a new album as well. Yes, yes. Uh, it is on the cards. It has already begun. Um, I'm even writing more new stuff now, so, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um I usually go into a new album with probably two or three albums worth of material. So, yeah, it's it's that exciting time of the year again for us where uh, the itch is well and truly there to uh, put out some new Dark Cell music. 
How do you find the process um, with working with the band now that you've... I mean, you guys have been doing it for a few years now. You know, you've, you've yeah. obviously... Uh, know each other musically very well. Do you find that, you know, it, it just clicks a lot easier these days? I don't know if that's the way of putting it, but, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, there, there's definitely... Uh, there's a lot more fluidity to the, the process now. Uh, the guys, you know, everyone's... Very, let's just say very comfortable, you know. Uh, it's It's an easier process. I wouldn't say completely easier because, you know, it can be a pain in the ass sometimes, uh, you know, especially trying to nail vocal tracks, uh, you know, because lightning never strikes twice. So, you know, it's, um, you know, a case of something really cool might come out and then it's like, okay, do that again. And it doesn't happen, you know, <laughs> for probably another two or three goes. But, uh, you know, that that's half the fun of being in the studio. It's, um, you know, it's, you go in there with a battle plan and you end up doing something completely different. And uh, I love the whole mystery of it. You know, you're talking about, as, as we were saying, about uh, getting comfortable as a band. Uh, how, yeah. how do you guys how do you guys challenge yourself when it gets like that? What, what do you guys do to sort of spice things up in the studio to, to get those creative juices flowing? Yeah, definitely scented candles, um, <laughs> some Barry White music in the background, and a warm fireplace. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> I wasn't meant to say that, was I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, look, I mean, for us, it's you know, we, yeah, you know, every band wants to go and make a better album than the last one and make the best album they can make. And I think you know, we're one of those bands. We just want to make the best album we can make artistically and say the statement we want to make at the time. Uh, you know, right now, I think the the mindset going into recording this new album is, is definitely darker, um, definitely more, dare I say, angrier. So, I mean, I, I won't make any promises of what to expect, but I know it will be uh, an exciting sound. So it'll be interesting to see because, I, I mean, we've learned so much over the last, especially two years um, with all the touring and everything we've done. So as a band, I think we'll go in um, a lot more polished um, with the ideas and a lot more inspired. So it'll definitely be, I think, a step up for us. That's awesome, man. I'm so keen to hear it. And, you know, it's you've got gigs coming up as well. I mean, you're playing uh, this Saturday night in uh, Brisbane for the, uh, was it Rock and Roll Wrestling? Yeah, I'm, I'm so pumped about it. It didn't really hit me till about last week um, or the week before because, I mean, just just been so, um, I don't know, going crazy writing all this new stuff. But, you know, just looking at the posters the other day, just realising holy shit, there's wrestling and, you know, all these cool things that, uh, I don't know, that I've always wanted to be a part of. So, you know, I've never done a wrestling event before, so I'm really pumped about it. Um, you know, because I've grown up as a, you know, as a wrestling fan and, you know, I'm a diehard Ultimate Warrior fan. So, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to, you know, uh, see what goes down this Saturday. And I'm hell pumped about the bands we're playing with, with, um, holistic and terror parade so yeah it'll be a lot of fun for everyone that comes along yeah it sounds like it's going to be uh awesome man and that's at the bright side the bright side yeah it's a cool venue yeah um yeah right in the valley like i believe it's like an old church or something um we played there once before and the stage is really cool and you know there's plenty of room for everyone to you know get down on the dance floor and do their thing so yeah, it, it should be a fun night for everyone. And um, the added bonus of the wrestling in the car park should be a you know sweet treat. Oh, it'll be huge, man. It'll be absolutely huge. Yeah. I saw at the gates there uh, a few months ago, and uh, that was the first time I'd stepped into that venue and uh, loved it. Loved it. So Yeah. We, we did a Halloween there, uh, I think it was a year or so ago, and it was, it was mental, like, I mean, we we played with a, a Kiss tribute band, and um, you know they had a jumping castle out in the <laughs> car park, and I don't know, just all kinds of weird, kooky, cool things going on. So 
they're definitely a venue that takes pride in the events they put on. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for anyone interested in coming along, it'll be worth every penny you spend. So, yeah. I agree, man. I, I agree. I think mm. it's going to...